I'm gonna make some pumpkin donut holes. This is a really cool recipe and kids absolutely love these. Big kids and little kids. In my bowl, I have three and a half cups of all-purpose flour, four teaspoons of baking powder, which is gonna make them burst, um, half a teaspoon of baking soda, half a teaspoon of salt. Then I also have in here pumpkin pie spices, such as one teaspoon of cinnamon, a half a teaspoon of nutmeg, excuse me, half a teaspoon of ginger, quarter teaspoon of nutmeg, and an eighth of a teaspoon of clove. You want to be err on the smaller side with the clove because it's a very strong flavor. And then all I did was just mix it all up and blend it, and we're going to put it aside. The other ingredients that we have to make the donuts are three tablespoons of room temperature butter, so it's nice and soft, one cup of sugar, some vanilla, pure vanilla please, uh, eggs. I have two egg yolks and one whole egg. I have one cup of pumpkin puree, not pumpkin pie filling, just pumpkin puree. And then I have one cup plus one tablespoon of milk. And actually what they ask for is buttermilk. If you have buttermilk, you're cool. Just use the buttermilk, one half cup plus a tablespoon. If you don't, which I don't, and I don't like to buy it because then I end up buying a whole quart of it, and I don't know what to do with the rest of it unless I'm doing an awful lot of baking. I don't drink milk that much. Take some regular white vinegar and just put a couple of drops in. It can be a teaspoon. And what it's going to do, it's going to add a lot of acidity to the milk, and that adds a lot of flavor to your baked goods. That's why you see a lot of buttermilk in recipes. This will get a little clumpy lumpy. Don't worry about it. Okay, let's start the recipe. In the mixing bowl, put the three tablespoons of butter. Nice and soft. And we're gonna put it on our mixer. And to that, we're going to start adding the one cup of sugar. It doesn't matter if you dump it all in at once at this point. And you just want to mix it until it's well combined. At this point, you can also add your vanilla, so that's one teaspoon of vanilla. Again, we go for the pure vanilla extract. And now, the eggs. And we're just going to let that mix up very well. This is going to make a ton of donut holes. And you're going to say, well, what am I going to do with a ton of donut holes? Don't worry about it. You can make these and you can freeze the un, uh, unbaked, if you will, donut holes in a bag. And then you can take out four, or five, six at a time um, and cook them. And then you have fresh donut holes and they'll stay in the freezer for six months. Uncooked. Though. I'll show you how to do that. All right. Got this nicely combined, and now we're going to add our pumpkin puree. Now, if you're a purist and you want to go out and buy a pumpkin or grow your own and make your pumpkin puree, go right ahead. But you know, the stuff in the can is really good and it's a heck of a lot easier to use. These donut holes are really tasty. They almost don't even taste like pumpkin. People say, what is that? They really love them. I'm going to add the flour in two additions with the buttermilk in between. And you see me keep taking it off the mixer because I like to scrape down the sides. I want to make sure everything in here is getting mixed up together and I don't have a lump of this or a lump of that somewhere. So, half of the flour mixture. Just eyeball it. Could you do this by hand? Probably, but um, it would be pretty strong. Most of us have mixtures though nowadays. And all of the, you can see the lumps in the buttermilk. Just watch it go cut clump. That's a good thing. Flour off the sides. 
Now, once I mix up all of this dough, I'm going to want to put it in a bowl, cover it with plastic bag, and it really should go in the refrigerator for a minimum of three hours. This is still going to be very sticky when I put it in the refrigerator. So if you tried to roll it now, you'd have a really hard time rolling it. It would just be sticky to everything. It's still going to stick a little bit when we do start rolling, but it will be a lot less when it's very cold. So what you could do actually, make this the day before, leave it in the refrigerator overnight, and then roll and cut your donut holes the next day. You could also, you don't have to make donut holes out of this. You can make full-size donuts if you want to. But I like making the donut holes. You get more of the, the surface with the cinnamon sugar on it. Okay, there's our dough. Can take it off the scraper. Different bowl, put it in the different bowl. You can see how it's still, it's not hard like a like some doughs. And you're gonna say, well, how are you ever gonna roll that out? You'll roll it out. You'll add a lot of flour to the table when you're rolling. Okay. So now I'm gonna cover this with plastic wrap and I'm gonna put it in my refrigerator for a minimum of three hours, and then I'll come back and I'll show you how to roll them and cut them. Here's the dough for the pumpkin donut holes out of the refrigerator. It was in there for a good four hours. It's still kind of sticky, but it's not too bad. Not like it was in the beginning. But it's still going to be a little bit of a chore to roll out. So, another thing, what are we gonna to use to cut them? Well, I have this little round, cutter that's used for donut holes but if you don't have one of these that's fine here's a decorating tip you can use this end of it or any other small round thing if you really get desperate you can just sit there and cut holes with a knife it's whatever you can find so we're going to put some flour generously on our table and i'm going to take out a scoop of this more flour. Flour my rolling pin. We're flouring everything because it's it is sticky. And wanted about half inch, three eighths inch thick. And I've got some cookie sheets here lined with foil that I'll put the, them on. And what I did is I sprinkled the foil or you can use parchment paper or you can use wax paper to coat it. And then just put some flour on it so that they don't stick to that later. Okay. Take my cutter and just start cutting donut holes. I'm putting them on your sheet. Now, I told you before that you can freeze these. What you would do is when you finished filling up the tray, you wouldn't cover the tray. You wouldn't do it just the whole tray, just like this, into the freezer until these little pucks become hard as a rock. Then when they're hard, you can take them off of the tray and pack them into Ziploc freezer bags. You have to wait till they're frozen because if you don't, if you put them all in the freezer bag, you're going to have one big lump when you uh, go to defrost them. They're just gonna be a big stick together mess. So, just gonna keep cutting these out and filling up my sheet. Here are our donut holes, one sheet of them anyway. I have two sheets. The other one I already put in the freezer. I got between 85 and 90 donut holes, somewhere in there, I've lost count. Anyways, what we're gonna do is we're going to fry some of them right now. I have a little fryer here. You don't have to have one of these. I happened to pick this up last year at a, uh, on a discount table in one of the big stores. Um, you can use a regular heavy duty pot with oil as long as you have some type of thermometer to know when your temperature is up to speed. Or you can use a deep fat, uh, not a deep fat fryer, but a electric fry pan, the big 
ones that sit on the tabletop. The only problem with that is um, you can do a lot of donuts, but I think they probably are going to use a lot of oil. I'm using canola oil um, to fry. I also have in a bowl, I have one cup of regular granulated sugar with a generous teaspoon of cinnamon, which I mixed up. And after the donut holes come out and they drain a bit while they're still warm, I'm going to roll them in the sugar. So here we go. Now be careful with this because, you know, it's hot cat. I don't want to overcrowd them. I let them get a little brown and then I use the basket that comes with it to push them down and submerge them 100% in the oil after they've already got a little bit of a crust on them. And that way I don't have to keep flipping and sometimes they don't want to turn over. And so it's like you fry these for approximately two minutes until they're, until they're brown. about two minutes and you can see how they have puffed up into little round balls they're not these flat little pucks anymore and we're going to drain them on a paper towel while we get our next batch in These are draining. Here is my cinnamon sugar. They're still warm. Put them in the cinnamon sugar and then roll them around until they're all coated with cinnamon sugar. And then back on the thing to cool. I'd love to eat one of these right now, but because they're so warm, I think they're just kind of gummy, so you want to really kind of cool them down. Now we'll just wait for the next batch. So here are our donut holes all done. I only fried about 25 of them because there's only a couple of us here. The rest of them I did what I told you I was going to do. I put them in the freezer on the tray and when they're frozen solid I'll pack them into bags so that I can have some tomorrow or the next day or next week. I kept the oil in my little fryer. That's the wonderful thing about these little fryers is that they've got a cover. You can keep them on your counter and use the same oil again tomorrow. And again, here's the rest of the sugar that I had. I'll just cover that with plastic wrap and I'll use those in the coming days. So what more do you want? I've got a cup of good coffee and I've got donut holes. These are delicious. I hope you try them.